For those of you who haven't seen Joe Joyce's fight from the weekend against Yago Kiladze, is that how you pronounce it? Yago Kiladze. You can find it here on Daily Motion. It's nothing to do with me. Somebody's uploaded it there. Again, completely nothing to do with me. But go and watch this fight if you haven't seen it and see what you think about Joe Joyce's performance here. It was his first fight under Abel Sanchez. And he's abandoned the style that he was developing under Ismail Salas with David Hay, where they were trying to get Joyce to actually fight a bit more like David Hay. You know, if you watch Joe Joyce when he fought that huge seven foot guy, I can't remember the guy's name, but that seven foot tall guy, Joyce was trying to emulate a David Hay type style, moving around with his left arm down low. And he actually did relatively well. Obviously, the opposition was atrocious, but he did relatively well emulating it the way he dived in with a big straight right hand to drop the guy. That was actually quite good. But he's abandoned all that, seemingly, now that he's with Abel Sanchez, and he's back to a style which is more similar to how he was boxing during his amateur days and in the very early days as a pro where he's just swarming forward and applying a lot of pressure. And Kaladze is a guy who's been in there with people like um, uh, Kauna Kaunaki, however you pronounce it, Kanowski. He's been in there with him and a couple of other guys. He's a cruiserweight, really, Kaladze. So he was outgunned in there against Joe Joyce. And Joyce walked him down. Joyce got hit quite a bit, though. He got hit quite a bit with some silly shots here and there. Kaladze to his credit, is relatively quick. And you would expect that from a guy moving up from cruiserweight. So he was relatively quick, certainly a lot quicker than Joyce. Joyce is very slow with his hands. You know, his hand speed is very slow, particularly when he's fighting in this in this style. When he was fighting more in the David Hay style, the, white, the right hand was whipped in quite quickly. But in this style, you know, he's not the quickest. So he did his thing. He walked the guy down. He dropped him a couple times. Joyce really does remind me <clears throat> in terms of his movement. You know, don't get excited here. I'm not saying he's as good as this person I'm about to mention. But in terms of his movement, he reminds me a lot of a young George Foreman. Because Foreman had this same stiff, awkward look about him. You know, just this, his, his, the way he throws his punches looks awkward and stiff and slow. But Joyce is clearly very heavy-handed because when he cracked this guy with a left hook, down the guy went. And a similar kind of thing with Foreman. Foreman sometimes would hit guys with shots that didn't look like they had much on him. But evidently they did. He was just a very, <clears throat> very, very heavy-handed fighter, George Foreman. And again, I'm not saying Joyce has that kind of power, but his power is deceptive in the same way. Where the shots don't look that heavy but apparently they are heavy. Now, some George Foreman punches obviously did look heavy when he was really winding up with shots and, you know, <laughs> throwing them from the canvas. But a lot of other George Foreman shots, they didn't look that heavy, you know, but they were. So, yeah, Joyce has got that same kind of young George Foreman vibe to his movement and he's slow, like George Foreman, stalks his opponents. I would like to see Joyce, like a, a, a George Foreman, develop his jab a bit more. Because he's stalking these guys and he's not really jabbing that much. He did jab Kaladze to the body quite a few times to, to slow him down. But I didn't see that many jabs to the head. And I still think his jab needs more development to the point where it's a real ramrod jab. You know, like a foreman. Because if you are a slow guy like Joyce, if you are a guy who's relatively easy to hit, your strengths need to be extra strong to compensate for the fact that you're slow and easy to hit. Yeah? Your strengths need to be out of the ballpark strong. So he needs to work on that jab. And yeah, he can work on his defense. But if he's going to be walking guys down like this, then inevitably he's going to get hit because he's just not that fast. you know. And he's looking to let his hands go. So if he tightens up his defense more, you know, w with a guy as slow as him, the punches might be easier to see coming. If he's fighting from a tight guard, then he has to drop his arms and bring the bring the shots out, particularly if he's fighting a moving opponent like this. You know, if you're a fast guy or a faster guy than Joyce, and it's not difficult to be faster than him in terms of hand speed, 
you can have your guard high. You can do all these kind of things and still throw fast shots from long range that catch your opponent by surprise. You know, but when you're Joyce, you need to have your, your, your hands in a more ready position to compensate for how slow he is, you know. So anyway, it was a decent enough performance against Kaladze. Joyce is very physically strong. That's one thing I can say. He looks very, very physically strong. He's a very big man. He's in shape, which is what we like to see, particularly with these heavyweights, because some of them, their conditioning is questionable, but it doesn't look to be the case with Joe Joyce. I've seen people say that they'd like to see Joe Joyce take on F.A. Ajagba. And yeah, that could be a fight. Potentially that may happen. Ajagbar is a Nigerian heavyweight who's causing a bit of a stir at the moment. He's been fighting on the PBC cards. You can see the little thumbnail there from his fight on the weekend, F.A. Ajagba. Joyce against Ajagba? Yeah, I don't know if they ever met as amateurs, but I wouldn't be surprised if they fought in the same tournaments and stuff like that. Uh, again, I don't know if they fought each other or sparred each other, but the amateur circuit, particularly at super heavyweight, is relatively small. So a lot of the guys have fought each other and sparred each other and all this kind of business. Yeah, a Jaguar versus Joyce would be good. I've seen some people say, no, they shouldn't fight now. They should build it up and wait to their champions. Who's to say either one of them is going to become a champion? You know, I'm, I, I know I, I sound like a selfish fan and in many ways I am a selfish fan, but I don't like waiting until they're champions for them to fight. I like when fighters who are on the way up and don't have world title belts Two young prospects fight each other. I like that because that's usually when you're going to see the best fight. Yeah. Uh, case in point, Anthony Joshua versus Dylan White. I was telling people for a long time that was going to be a great fight. As long as it lasts, I was telling people that's going to be a hell of a fight. And people rubbished me and ridiculed me. I turned out to be correct. Because when you understand where a fighter is at mentally and where they're at in their career, you'll be able to gauge the kind of mindset they're going to have going into a fight, you know? And with young fighters who have got something to prove and a lot of pressure on them, that's when you're going to get good fights, when, they don't, when they're not at world championship level, when they're not seasoned yet, when they're not yet fighting KG. That's when you want to put two fighters together to get the most dramatic results. So I'd like to see Joe Joyce against a Jaguar sooner rather than later, to be honest with you, you know, and the winner can go on and achieve things. I mean, look at Dylan White against Anthony Joshua. Dylan White didn't fade away into obscurity. He put on a good performance against Joshua, a gallant effort in losing, and he was able to build his own profile off the back of that. So losing is not the end of the world. As long as you put on a great show, then if the other guy who wins goes on to achieve great things, you are going to benefit from his success. You understand? Just the way that Dylan White benefited from Joshua's success because Dylan White had given Joshua a run for his money. You know? So winning or losing, it, it, losing is not the end of the world as long as you give a good account of yourself. You know? So, yeah. Decent performance from Joyce against Kaladze, but he's, Joyce is limited. We all know that. It's nothing new. Slow, easy to hit, but let's see how he develops under Abel Sanchez. Let's see if Sanchez can teach him a few technical things and a few tricks and uh, see how far he can go. Let me know how you feel in the comment section below, people. It's happening. I'm out. Join me on Patreon. I upload a minimum of two podcasts every single week covering a wide variety of controversial topics as well as live stream Q&A sessions. Take a look on screen right now at some of the podcasts I've produced so far. For just $3 a month, the equivalent of about £2 a month, you get access to all my new podcasts and my entire back catalogue of past podcasts, including my popular Confessions of a Nightclub Bouncer series. You can listen on your computer or on your smartphone or tablet by downloading the Patreon app from the Google Play Store or the App Store for free. The Patreon app also allows you to download each podcast in MP3. For less than the price of a cup of coffee, you get access to dozens of hours of exclusive content. It's easy to sign up, there's no contract, and you can cancel at any time. So come and join our community of free and critical thinkers by signing up with me here on Patreon today.